Do you feel like you can't find enough cloud engineers with multi-cloud experience? What skills does a cloud engineer need to have anyways? And are companies really reorganizing in order to form platform teams? It's time to find out if you're the only one asking these questions. I'm David Howes, a senior solutions engineer from HashiCorp, and today I'll be walking through my opinions on the 2022 HashiCorp State of Cloud Strategy Survey based on research commissioned by HashiCorp and conducted by Forrester Consulting. The survey consulted more than 1,000 technology practitioners and decision makers from around the world in order to find key trends within our industry. So let's start with the results which I believe shed light on the skills needed by cloud engineers of the day. 90% said that multi-cloud is working. Companies are being forced into multi-cloud through reasons like costs, uh, features, or even acquisitions. And for our cloud engineers, this typically means gaining familiarity with cloud agnostic tool sets instead of trying to learn individual tools across each and every cloud. But no one said multi-cloud is easy, and with it comes numerous security concerns. 89% see security as a key driver of cloud success. If multi-cloud is inevitable, then security is a necessity. And this is forcing our cloud engineers to think differently about their own skills, Um, but they're not thinking about security in a traditional way. And that's because to the surprise of absolutely nobody, 99% say that automation is important for multi-cloud operations. This is exactly how our cloud engineers are viewing their own security skills. From what I've seen, zero trust security has exploded in popularity. For instance, using identity-driven controls provides a simpler approach to automation when compared to using legacy IP address controls. And finally, we have our platform teams. 86% rely on cloud platform teams to drive cloud operations and strategy within their organizations. In my opinion, this change is the result of heavy complexity of multi-cloud operations being unfairly placed upon the developers. Leveraging this new model, developers may still take some responsibility in the form of self-service operations, but they are vastly more focused on delivering product. These metrics validate that the skills needed of cloud engineers align closely with the HashiCorp portfolio. HashiCorp has built cloud agnostic tools for practitioners to approach multi-cloud environments. On a small scale, this means these automation-driven tools uh, drive more efficiency for our practitioners. But on a larger scale, we see platform teams use these same products to develop successful workflows for entire organizations. So whether it's across infrastructure, security, networking, or applications, platform teams are adopting HashiCorp tools to build a single cloud operating model despite the underlying cloud platform that they may be deploying to. However, technology is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to multi-cloud. Let's take a look at some of the common challenges which the survey uncovered. 94% feel that they're wasting money in the cloud. And unfortunately, this is something that I see every day. There's dev environments sitting idle, there's abandoned projects, and over-provisioned resources, just to name a few of the reasons. We clearly still have a lot of inefficiencies to iron out in the cloud, but these are just symptoms of a larger problem. We need to ask why these resources have ended up in this state to begin with. And it's not the fault of a specific technology such as cloud. It turns out our survey candidates agree. Skill shortages were ranked as the top barrier to multi-cloud. Alongside this, the second highest barrier is teams working within silos. What I find fascinating about this is that despite being in an extremely technical field, these reasons have nothing to do with technology. Our main challenges continue to come from people and process. This is why a core philosophy of HashiCorp is to focus on building workflows, not technologies. So there's clearly a high demand for cloud engineering talent, and that's also shown in Stack Overflow's developer survey from 2022. The fourth to sixth highest paid median salaries in the U.S. for respondents were site reliability engineers, cloud infrastructure engineers, and security professionals. The only positions above these were executives, managers, and blockchain engineers. This shows that some of the highest paid individual contributors in IT are those that are likely to be a good fit for our centralized cloud platform teams. 
And if we look at Terraform specifically, a common cloud engineer tool, we see further proof for this theory. In summary, we're having success with multi-cloud, but it's not as efficient as it could be. Our core problems seem to stem from competing for top employees and re-architecting legacy workflows for the cloud. So here's how we begin to solve our multi-cloud skill shortage. First, we need to recruit top performers. To do that, your company needs to use technology that practitioners love. New and exciting technologies that are designed for the multi-cloud era will always draw top employees when compared over legacy solutions, which may still be designed for a former model. And luckily, if you're listening to this video, there's a good chance you're already a HashiCorp open source user. And I can say for a fact that HashiCorp's tools are loved. That same Stack Overflow survey we just mentioned has Terraform as the third most loved developer tool within its category. Second, we need to optimize the time of our top performers. We can't take our most valuable resources and assign them to building out backend workflows that don't drive revenue. Those backend tasks tend to be generic industry challenges which already have packaged solutions available. Instead, those employees should be working on tasks that are specialized to your industry and business. These tasks drive business value and allow your platform team to become a force multiplier upon the developer organization. A few minutes saved for each developer can turn into hundreds of hours of productivity over time. Essentially, avoid reinventing the wheel and switch your focus to challenges unique to your company. Third, invest in your top employees. While it seems obvious, it needs to be said. Continue to encourage training and certification in all of your employees. Successful individuals want to continue to improve themselves each and every day. Last and most importantly is to prepare to lose your top performers. Eventually, you will lose one of your top resources for one reason or another. To prevent disruption to the business in this situation, we need to focus on adopting common frameworks. For example, take anyone in the US who has a driver's license. They probably know how to drive an automatic car. However, only a subset of those individuals know how to drive a manual car. If your bu business required uh, drivers, but you were standardized on manual cars, you would have more difficulty hiring. When a company deviates from the standard framework, they make it more difficult to hire and train employees who can adapt to a custom workflow for their company. Instead, adopt a standard framework so that you can hire anyone with that driver's license or experience within a specific technology. This allows new employees to quickly begin contributing to the business. Let's now look at how HashiCorp addresses these four strategies, starting with HashiCorp Enterprise Solutions. We solved two of the previous challenges, and the first is optimizing our top performers. The enterprise products overcome common industry challenges out of the box, such as multi-tenancy, resiliency, or disaster recovery. As we previously stated, the resources we need to run these products are expensive and hard to find. Why have valuable employees solve these backend problems that provide little value when they can instead spend time using HashiCorp solutions to drive strategic business initiatives. In addition, these products provide a standard framework for the industry to protect us from the loss of a top performer who might have knowledge of a custom workflow. For example, if a potential hire is familiar with Terraform Cloud at Company X, they're going to have no problem when they transition to Terraform Cloud at Company Y. The enterprise products in this way become the standard language of the industry. Finally, let's address investing in your top performers. HashiCorp provides structured training for both in-person and virtual settings. These training sessions allow your team to deepen their skills within the HashiCorp portfolio and explore the products on a level that their day-to-day -day job might not allow them to do. HashiCorp then offers four different certifications that allow your team to showcase their expertise. In addition, these certifications serve as proof that 
an individual is capable of adapting to those previously mentioned standard frameworks. Looking out for these certifications can be highly beneficial when hiring new employees. And while I can't provide specific statistics around our certifications, I can say that the number of certifications is approximately doubling every year, which becomes just a larger pool of resources for you to pull from. So I hope that gives you some insight and thought-provoking data on today's multi-cloud skill shortage. From here, I suggest visiting our public developer site where we have information and tutorials about the products, as well as how to get up and running on uh, our HashiCorp cloud platform, which provides that previously mentioned standard framework to get you moving that much faster. If you have an additional question, I recommend reach out to your account team, get engaged with them, and they'll be happy to help you. I appreciate the time today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.